All right, this is lecture number 12, uh, using encryption logic. It's kind of a continuation of the last lecture on DES. It's not about DES, but kind of, we talked about ECB and stuff like that. So let's talk about it. Um, encryption provides a false sense of security. Just because something's encrypted, does that mean we're safe? No. Not necessarily if you don't do it correctly. And a lot of times people configure stuff, but do it the wrong way. Or won't turn it on, or you know something. Like I said, it must be used correctly. There's practices, there's protocols. You must follow them. And you know, I am the probably the number one worst at this. I'll be working on something, and I'll call it test, or then you don't change it later on, or you know what? I'm going to disable this temporarily, and you don't turn it back on later. It's, it, it's terrible. It's like I have an alarm in my house. How many of y'all have alarms at your house? Do you use it every time you leave? Well, I do, but the problem is my mother-in-law can't figure it out. So when I leave her at home, well, when she leaves, she doesn't set it because she can't figure it out. So half the time, my house is unprotected, so don't go to my house. Okay? <laughs> it's locked. There's a guard dog. Yeah, but the point is, gives us this false sense that we're safe and it might not. Okay. Now let's talk about performance. There is a question, I think two questions, strictly off of this slide. So know this slide. This is like slide two. Okay. Okay. Performance. Stream is quicker than block. Because stream, you're getting it as I type. Okay? So imagine me being a slow typist. Like today I was up in class, and the class kept yelling at me because I'm a very fast typist. I kept typing this Python code on the screen. I'm like, are you all done? They're like, no, they're like 12 lines back because I was typing too fast. So, but with the stream cipher, as I'm entering it, it's being encrypted and sent across. So it's pretty quick. Block, I have to get the entire block entered first. And then it gets encrypted. So, so you literally could be waiting on the other end for a while. Depending. On, see what I'm saying? So stream is quicker. Okay. Yeah. Des, yeah, and stream block is kind of in the middle. Des uses 64-bit blocks. We know that. Broken into 232s. Y'all know all that. You just did homework on that, I hope. Okay. RSA uses 10 to 200 bit blocks. So they're bigger, could take longer. But now with our networks, you know, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Okay. Symmetric, 10,000 times faster. That's why we use it. Okay. Symmetric algorithms, same key or different key? Same key. Same, same key, exactly. I think that's on this test too, by the way. Symmetric, same key, are so fast. Okay. Hardware is always faster than software. Always. It just is. Because if you think about it, software is running on top of hardware. So obviously there's another layer of abstraction there. So if you have something built into the hardware, it's always going to be quicker. Okay. Okay. If you look at the differences, hardware is 220 k bits per second. Compare it to 0.5 kbits per second in software. That's crazy difference. Devs, 1,200,000 kbits per second compared to 400,000. So which one's faster? Hardware, obviously. So the answer is hardware. Okay. So you know what the delay is. You know how that works. Okay. You're good there. Okay. Block, blo uh, block, 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 replay. Block replay is, you know, I still remember way back in, when I was taking that class, it was in 92, maybe 93 time period, I was taking a networks class, and it was funny, the teacher showed an article of a theft at an ATM. The reason they caught the guys was the guys were standing there with a paper bag collecting money. It's the only reason they caught them. What they did was they unhooked the phone, they, they tapped into the phone line, and recorded it, and then hit playback, and played it right back to the ATM. <laughs> so they just kept play over and over, and just kept sucking the money out. Bad idea. You don't want to be able to do that. So if the block, you know, if the first block has the depositor name, and all you would have to do is change it to your name, and replay the rest of it, and get it. So, you know, I was watching a movie yesterday. 
I watched one of it. It was called Low Something. It was about like the birth of the internet. You know the first message ever sent on the internet? What, on the internet what it was? Spam. It was actually low. It was L O. Because they were connecting these two computers, and what you did was you had to send the word log for a login. Okay? So they sent the letter L and it went across. No problem. They received the L. They sent the letter O, it went across and they received it. They sent the G and it crashed the machine. <laughs> but so the first message was L O. But with this stuff here, you know, just by replaying stuff over and over is bad. But we've solved that. So they're t they were talking in the movie how that we're fixing the problems. So us as designers and engineers and workers, we have to know about all the prior problems plus figure out new problems. You know, it's kind of it's harder on us because if you're going to develop something, you kind of already have to be up to this level because everybody else already got to this level. So uh, it's, it's just tough. So blockchaining. Okay, so we're going to take two blocks X1 together. That prevents replay. Because if one block is connected to the next block and that one's connected to the next block, you're kind of mixing them together. So there's no single block to just keep replaying over and over and over. Okay. So blockchaining prevents replay. Okay. That's kind of what we talked about encryption here. You take your plain text one with a key and encrypt it. Then you take your plain text two. XOR with your plain text one. So what you're doing is you're taking the results of the first encryption, XORing it with the results of the, you know, with the second one, and then coming up, with, you know, so you keep adding. It just makes it so much harder to figure out, which is a good thing, which is a very, very, very good thing. And decrypting, you'd be doing it backwards, okay? So you're adding, like it says here on this first one, we take plain text one, get ciphertext one. Then we Combine that ciphertext one with our plain text two. We XOR them to get our ciphertext two. Then we take, you know, we continue on forever. So there'll be ciphertext two uh, with plain text three to get ciphertext three, and so on and so forth. Okay, decryption is just backwards. So blockchaining helps us in everything we do. You don't want to just encrypt one thing anymore. It's not good. Okay. Initial chaining vector, that's when we start with something. Because we got to encrypt that first block with something. Is it a good idea to always encrypt it with the same thing? Not necessarily. That's kind of the reason they, in an imitation game, they showed you is they always had Adolf Hitler in there. So. Uh, that's why the, Japan did that. Japan left it the same thing through the whole war, I believe, right? Right, at the beginning, yes. They did the very... the the. Because if you know the beginning, then you can figure out, oh, so this plus this gives us this, and then you kind of have the initial, and then you can continue going from that point. So it, it's not as good. Okay? So if you're including it with the vector, you know, it's it's better than nothing. It's just not a good idea to do But you have to do something. So. Okay. One-way functions, you don't need to know the math behind this. Don't write this math down. But one-way functions are functions that you cannot decrypt easily. It's kind of like MD5, SHA-1, all those. It's something that we encrypt it, and we can't decrypt it. Okay? So that's how we store our passwords. So we take our passwords, we encrypt it with a function. I think it's uh, MD5 crypt right now. And we store the hash of that. So when I go to log into the computer system, I type in my password, it encrypts it as well with the same algorithm. Then it compares what I just typed after it was encrypted with what's in stored after it was encrypted. So many people, you know, they're wondering, why. Well, how come Rose State won't tell me what my password is? They don't know what your password is. And hopefully they never know what your password is. If they know what your password is, that's a problem. That means it's stored in plain text somewhere where someone could get it. You never want, no one should ever be able to retrieve your password. And it kind of drives me crazy when sometimes I do. A lot of websites actually can retrieve your password. I forgot my password and they send it to you. It's like, that sucks. How can, you should send me a link to reset it. But there's also a drawback to that. 
I go to a website that Juan uses, I forgot my password. And it lets me reset Juan's password. That wouldn't be good either. He'd have to, you know, well, he left his computer unlocked. So I'm sitting there for the next five minutes. Ooh, going to, ooh he's logged into First National Bank. Who forgot my password? Get his email real quick. There you go. So, I mean, you know, it's good and bad. So is there one perfect answer? No. But they're saying by 2020 we won't be using passwords anymore. Anyway, you all have two-factor authentication, don't you? Anyone have it in here? Oh, yes, yeah. For some things. Tell you what. Send me proof you're using it, and at least one account will give you extra credit. I can do that right now. You have until, I'm not today. I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> I'm not going to post it anywhere. So get it to me by Sunday. Prove that you are using two-factor authentication on something. Okay. Okay. I have mine on. I have mine on LastPass, Microsoft OneNote, uh, Microsoft OneDrive. I'm sorry. TeamViewer, LogMeIn, Google, and Dropbox. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on just about anything. You need it. Gmail is awesome because what they do with Gmail is I have this code, okay? What what this is is to get into my Gmail, you need my username and password. And then ask for the code. And there's the code. It changes every 60 seconds. But Google actually changed theirs now. Whenever I go to log in now, it's like trying to phone. <laughs> bring up the Google app. So I bring up the Google search app. And it says, you want to log in? Yes, done. I don't have to type in the code anymore. But I have to have my phone. So if I, you know, it just makes it easier. You're trying to make it so you don't have to type in the code. But when I want to log in, I still have to have the phone. You would have to have my username and password and my phone to get in. And my phone would have to be unlocked. Get it turned on on something. I mean, it's, it's awesome. If you're not using LastPass, you need to. Even iCloud is turned on on iCloud. Yeah, iCloud does it too. But iCloud, once you turn it on, you can't use it for two full days. Just so you know. You can't use two-factor? You can. Because once you turn it on... Uh, a couple months ago, because I went to, because I turned mine off for a while, mm -hmm. I turned it back down. Says, okay, you can now enable this in 48 hours. I'm like, I wonder if it's to prevent someone from turning on real quick and got into my account. I don't know. Maybe because I did Apple Pay for three years and it wasn't all done. Yeah, oh, it's new. Yeah, it would have to be. Yeah, it's probably to prevent one from getting my phone and trying to turn it on and lock me out. Because then I could go in and. Because it even tells you an email, okay, it'll be ready in 48 hours, and okay, now you can go and finish enabling it. But if you're not using LastPass, it's lastpass.com. Go there. It's free. I have the pro version. I don't need it anymore, so I'll probably cancel it. But uh, the free version is perfect. It remembers all your passwords. I finally talked Terry Byers into using it. He's like, why the heck did I need to use this years ago? Does anyone who uses LastPass in here? One person. I did for a little bit, and... Uh... Because I have like 200 websites, you can't remember all those. Yeah. 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 And now, you said something about it like during Gen Cyber, and I was like, that's what I signed up for. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and what it is, my Facebook password is now 30 characters long. So is my Gmail and all them. So try breaking that password. I don't know what it is. It's all random. So. <laughs> now, if you get into my last pass, but that's a nice long phrase to go into it. And even if you got into my last pass, you need the code because I got two factor authentication. <laughs> so you need that username and password and two factor. So they're all kind of tied together. So. Can you lose your phone? <laughs> Why now? So if you lose your phone, you're out of luck. <laughs> I need your password to match you. Well, if I lose my phone, well, I can always just store it for backup. I mean, that's not a big deal. Um, but I can also do it with my watch. Oh, okay. And and when you install it, it gives you like 20 SOS codes. You can print out these codes that I store in my safe at home. So Never had to use them. I'm assuming it would work. It's kind of like this password, if nothing else fails, it bypasses everything. So All right. But, so, since this chapter is about using encryption wise, you should start using that stuff. Because... You know, like that thing says in my door, so many people reuse the same password. If I'm ever, I, you know, I do too. I have the same password on many accounts. But I have so many accounts, it's like, don't even know what the heck they are. And even LastPass will tell you, oh, by the way, when you install LastPass, do not go through the whole security checkup. 
It will be there for months. <laughs> I've still not finished it yet. Oh. Still haven't finished it yet. Because it literally wants to go through every single account of yours and every pattern, check it, make sure it's not duplicate and all. So just install it, import stuff from your browser, whatever, and then start using it. You can do a security checkup later. <laughs> I do a little bit here and there. It's like sometimes it goes, you know, you got five websites with the same password, and it shows me which ones they are, so I'll go in and change a couple of them. So, so it's kind of cool. All right. Now let's talk about sealing, cryptographic sealing. And by the way, this extra credit pertains to the fall 2017 Ken Dewey's class only. Mm -hmm. So many times I do that, and then somebody else in another class, oh, hey, here's the extra credit. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so fall 2017, Ken Dewey's in-class class, first eight weeks only. Okay. So cryptographic sealing gives us integrity rather than secrecy. So I'm not really worried that you can see it, kind of like a mortgage document. I just want to know it's real. Okay. I don't care if you say it. Obviously, you know, mortgage documents are published. They're, they're, they're public record. But wouldn't it be nice if it's real? It's the correct document. So what we do there is we store the file and the hash of the file. So that if we take the file again later on and hash it again, should we get the same result? If the file has not changed, we should get the same result. So we can always go back and check it. It gives us integrity to make sure the document has not changed. Okay, it's kind of like in the court of law, doing forensics work. You make a copy of whatever this evidence is, and you always work off the copy. Later on, when you go to court, they should be able to say, "Hey, let's do that hash again, and if it matches, then we know the data has not been changed in any fashion." Okay, so this cryptographic checksum, whatever we're making here, could be added at the end of your chain. The very last thing is kind of like a checksum. They call it, sometimes they call it parity checksum, whatever you want to call it. But it's a way of verifying that it's correct. Okay. All right, authentication. We can get that with biometrics. I just, I still, the iPhone 10. Y'all know what the iPhone 10 is. You know, it's gonna have facial biometrics. No more fingerprints. We'll see. Hey, we found out why during the keynote it failed. Did y'all read that? It's because so many people were setting it up on the stage. It kept looking at the, and it basically, after so many failed attempts, it locks you out. So they had timed it out. They had locked it out on him already. So he had to go to the backup phone. But um, biometrics, I don't like it, but it works. Like my fingerprint on here works fine. But if my finger's wet, it doesn't work. Or too dry. Or too or, yeah, or too anything. Say you got a cut. There you go. So I'm worried about the, yeah, okay, this facial one's going to take a picture of me. Or not really take a picture, you know. What's it going to do to my battery life? Because right now I can grab it and I can check it 20 times, you know, no problem. But what if it's having to bring up the camera and take a picture every time? Because I am notorious for the moment I've done it, I always lock my phone. I always do. I just, it's a habit. So I'm going to keep locking my phone. Every time I pick it up, it's going to have to unlock it every single time. So. And I, it's going to also be very good software because the software that Xbox One uses right now. Maybe that's why it's people, not available yet. Well, let two people of similar characteristics. Well, they did say if you have like an identical twin, that could be an issue. Well, my sons aren't identical, but they're really close. Well, you should try to get them the phone. <laughs> okay, so authentication, we can use biometrics. And I think that's a field that's going to be changing a bunch in the near future. Okay, what do y'all think about getting uh, chipped? You know, where they put the little. Yes. We're going to be there soon. Yes. Yes. Do it on our pets? I don't want to be tracked. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're already tracked. tracked. You're, you're, yeah, you're already tracked. I mean, you know, now, yes, the moment. Here's the thing. At the moment, if I have a phone, you know, when I don't have a phone on me, now, I'm still not tracked. Still tracked. Out the door. You're still tracked. Um, Texas. I went through the uh, expressway going around Houston. All works for your license plates now. Yeah. Oklahoma's starting it. I think the one up there by the, the, the new one, Peebly Road, when they're going to put in, it's not going to have uh, the toll booths. 
It's all going to be, I guess, we have a license plate. I think the Indian Nation Turnpike already has. Okay, and they, I'd heard it was going to be on somewhere else. So, what I kind of like about it is I can go into the app and say, this license plate is active right now. And I can use it. Then, oh, turn that one off. Now, this license plate is active. Turn that one on. So, you don't have to pay 40 bucks for a bike pass either. Right. Okay. Timestamps help prevent replays. So, if we timestamp something, but timestamps, you've got to make sure they're not fraud. Like email timestamps are stupid. Uh, there's a lot of spammers out there who will set the date of their system five years in the future. Then send out spam. Why would they do that? So there's a right at the top of my inbox. No matter what, it's at the top of my inbox. Even though I received 20 more messages that day, it's still right at the top. Because it was the most recent thing you ever received. Yeah, five years. in five years in the future, exactly. Uh, chronology, you know, we want to make sure, you know, we got to keep, you know, things in order. It's kind of important, especially when packets and stuff like that. And that's really through, um, 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 oh, whatever it's called. Packets are kept in order by, what's it called? I can't think. Sequence numbers, there it is. And acknowledgement numbers. But All right, senders and receivers, timestamps must match. If they don't match, then something got changed. So... Not on test, by the way, just good information, but it might be on test now. Okay, let's talk about some of the different encryption modes. ECB, every block is encrypted individually. We pretty much talked about this one the other day. Identical blocks produce the identical ciphertext. So if we have some plain text, we encrypt it with a key, we get the same ciphertext. We talked about this the other day. Okay, nothing, same plain text encrypted five times, we're getting the same ciphertext. Okay. There's decryption. It's just backwards. Okay. CBC, cipher block chaining, prevents replay. What we're doing now is we are chaining the blocks together. You don't need to know the math behind it, but the way cipher block chaining looks like is this. We have our initialization vector. We XOR with our plain text. We encrypt it. Then after the encryption, or in other words, that cipher text becomes the next initialization vector basically for the second packet and so on and so forth okay I'm going to give you a picture of one of these you're gonna tell me which one it is okay what better hint can you get than that <laughs> <laughs> okay cipher block chaining okay there's decryption cipher feedback it says the block nature is of is inconvenient parcel blocks is an issue let me show you what that one looks like. Now we have our initialization vector in our key and our plain text. Now you'll notice the, the plain text is actually after the encryption. So what we're really encrypting is the initialization vector and the key. Then we're excellent with the plain text, and that becomes our ciphertext. Then that result becomes the next initialization vector. Okay? Now. Let's look at output feedback. These are very similar. Okay. Notice the difference where the the initials or the, the, the data for the next one comes from. See how it's above the XOR here? It's below the XOR here. Okay, see the difference? It's the only difference. So cipher feedback, it's below the XOR of the plain text. Output feedback, it's before the XOR of the plain text. So a difference. See that? Know that difference. That will help you. Okay. All right. It's all those slides.